Our next story shows just how the men and women of the South Carolina Highway Patrol used the latest technology to assist them in tracking down a pair of hit-and-run killers. Steve Rayburn and Bill Kellis are beginning their day drinking beer and smoking crack cocaine. Criminal activity is nothing new to Rayburn. Members of his family have been arrested for auto theft, manslaughter, assault and battery, even torture. Greg and Wilma Coggins are on their way to the store down the road with their grandchildren, who are visiting from California. Come on, Bo, give me some beer! Bo. As the two men drive, they keep drinking. Trooper Fred McDaniels and Sergeant Ralph Mobley are among the first to reach the accident. McDaniels finds a beer can still cold and half full. Sergeant Mobley finds fragments of a headlight. Two of the children die on impact. The other two are seriously injured. I need to talk with you just a minute. Yeah, come on. Just. The thing that went through my mind was that someone that could run over four children, leaving two dead and two badly injured and leave the scene was obviously a hardened criminal or someone with a hardened heart. A neighbor sees the truck pull up to the trailer, noticing a dent in the right front fender. Relax. Think of the ocean. What happened today? With the help of a hypnotist, the children's grandfather remembers the color and features of the truck. What kind of truck? Full size pickup truck. Well, we've got a candidate list. Let's look at our number one candidate. Um, let's check the images out here. Let's see if the details are signed. Within hours, forensic technicians identified the fingerprints found on the beer can using a nationwide computer database file. Do you intend to answer truthfully each question I ask? Troopers pick up the passenger and give him a lie detector test. He says he wasn't involved, but he fails the test. Just take a look at this picture for me and see if you might recognize that. That's the pickup truck that we believe. Pictures of similar trucks are handed out in the neighborhood in an effort to find anyone who's seen the truck before. Examining the fragments from the truck's headlights, investigators get the make and model of the truck. I ask you about that accident last July 18th, 1991. The driver is brought in for a lie detector test, but there's still no trace of the truck. Yes. A hit and run murderer faces the truth when we come back. Two children are killed and two others seriously injured when they are struck down by a hit-and-run driver. Troopers use the latest technology to trace the killer. Mr. Thompson, my name is Trooper F.M. McDaniel. I'm with Highway Patrol. Just like After seeing the killer on local television denying he owns the truck, a neighbor comes forth and says he's ridden in the truck with the man. Other witnesses come forward to identify the truck, but investigators need more evidence. You know, from off the clothing also, on 83, 84. So by taking these paint samples, microscopic analysis on it, let's take a look through here. Troopers find paint chips on the children's clothing, which further link the driver to the truck. We confirm it the same way, but we're pretty confident that it's going to be a Chevrolet. That's good, Mike. That sounds real good. We have a arrest warrant for Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray. Armed with a search warrant, troopers search the driver's home and arrest him. Though the truck was never found, investigators believe that the two killers dismantled the truck and shipped the parts out of state in an attempt to destroy the evidence. The passenger was convicted of being an accessory to a crime and was given six years in prison. The driver was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter and was given eight years in prison. The two younger children have made a full recovery and have returned to their parents in California. Sergeant Mobley is now a first sergeant working as a supervisor in Richland County, investigating traffic-related crimes. 